Welcome to Venture Ventures, where a, I'm gonna try this again, Dave, where a crash of improvisers, writers, LARPers, and overall story lovers play D&D 5e. It's a campaign set in my homebrew world of Exoros. I am the Dungeon Master, Jake Friday. And today we have a special guest, uh, in not in the pink, beautiful uh, blanket, but with the fire hair. Uh, Cynthia Marie, welcome and thank you for joining us. And yeah, we're super happy to have you, especially with, uh, well, I'm happy, especially when I uh, get started here, knowing what's going to happen. So uh, let's go around the table. <laughs> That's not, th did that sound ominous? Happens to Nihilus. <laughs> and I just realized I had the. You may bring it on yourself. I had a couple. <laughs> first of all, apologies to anyone watching because I had a couple mics muted and uh, we got them unmuted now. Glad I caught that now. Um, anyways, Cynthia Marie is joining us and let's go around the table uh, and let's start with Richard. Oh, hola. Um, I'm Richard. My name is Richard. Uh, I play a, a Triton Sorcerer named Nihilus, and yeah, he's uh, uh, very beautiful right now. He's feeling himself. He uh, is so into what's going on. Mm -hmm. The opposite of that. <laughs> no. All wrong. All wrong. Mm -mm. Um, Dave. Hey, guys. My name is Dave Roderick. Um, I play a Kenku warlock named Prati. Uh, Brian. Hey, I'm Brian Rice. I play a human monk named Crispin Crispy Oakenshaft, and I'm the badass of the group right now, at least, <laughs> if I do say so myself. And, uh, Orson, a.k.a. Ryan. I am Ryan Omega. I play Orson Acres, pig farmer slash warlock human. And let's go to the sisters in the bottom left of your screen, Lex. Uh, hi, I'm Lex. I play the mouse folk fighter named Ashwin. Cynthia. Hi, I play uh, Girasol, the fire slash lava genasi on Sirens of the Realm. Perfect. So let's get right into it. Uh, last time on Venture Ventures, uh, the big bedfellows, the players as they're known, uh, received a job from an adventuring agency called Venture Ventures Adventuring Agency. Max Morningbrow sent them to find a underling of a inventor and philanthrop philanthropist, if I could say the word, uh, that they've worked for before named Felix Tricknips. Uh, the person they were looking for went to the Viranal Dominion, which is a hermit kingdom, and uh, eventually uh, they made their way there and um, had some issues at Customs, a fantasy room where uh, they had to essentially tell their truth, and a couple players got punished for not telling their truth uh, by the powers that be. And uh, last episode, they made it to a town called uh, Glodopole, and that's where they found Alu, dead, uh, and they found he was not just a person, he was a construct. And um, then, out of the corner of the cellar where they found Alu, a gas spore, a floating beholder-looking-ish, it's not a beholder, uh, gas spore came out and uh, exploded, got, getting on, uh, let's see, it was Prodi, Nihilus, and Crispy. Crispy. And that's where we left off. So, enveloped in a puff of dark green spores, you find yourself slowly falling out of your existence into the foggy haze of another's. The dreamlike fog recedes as quickly as it closed around you, revealing a memory. So, uh, Prodi, Nihilus, and uh, Crispy, roll a d12. 12. Okay. Ten. Okay. Nihilus? Uh, I think you're muted. 
two. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Nihilus, uh, this is your memory that you're experiencing, a memory. You're floating mm -hmm. about 20 feet off the ground, staring into the hourglass-shaped iris of a six-foot diameter beholder. But you're not only staring at this powder-white scaled beholder, you are somehow staring simultaneously behind you, below you, above you, around you, and many other directions. You're the great Fordock Kems. You're already reluctantly discussing the meeting you and this pathetic excuse for a beholder in front of you had with Felix Tricknips. You're not sure you want to start a war with the Shard Mine. Uh, not because you couldn't win it, of course. No, you're the pinnacle of your kind. Uh, it's because you're not sure you want to help this guy, this little gnome, do the dirty work. Uh, you're sure he's talking to the shard mind as well. Most likely the case, he's playing both sides. Uh, and he didn't even show the respect to bring more than two shield guardians to this meeting. Uh, but despite his stature, you're impressed with his skills as a, uh, golemancer and artificer. Um, Felix did offer to give you territory in exchange for, uh... You, Fordock Chems, rescuing his consistent supply of Vernalian crystals. Um, but the director, the other beholder you're staring at, thinks he can uh, help us open the Dreadgate. But the likelihood of that is 0.00186%. So, uh, memory two, Prodi. Uh, you are the pinnacle of beholder kind. You are Fordock Chems, disciple of Chems. Only Kem's father, Father Lymic, is greater. You must accept their offer. Somehow the shard mine were awoken by Father Lymic to open the living gate to bring back Kem's father. That must be the explanation. Once you reach them in the southern breach of the Dominion, you will, of course, lead the shard mine and their disciples. Uh, Crispy, your memory is... These dark powers the director has discourse with are clearly using him. You, Fordock Kems, could never be manipulated so easily. It was you who perfected the use of the Mirage Towers for Avner Bree and Felix Tricknips. It was you who dispatched the various adventuring parties sent by Avner and Felix to kill us when we refused to help them. It won't matter, though. I hear them more and more now calling for me. Deep underneath the mountains to the south, calling for the rise of Mostashar. Uh, and then you snap too, and you're back in your body, coughing a little. You just got <coughs> green spores all up in you. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> what? What just happened? Who? 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 Uh, do we? And did we know that we were this Fordock Chems? Do we know that name or anything? Are you asking me? Yeah. Uh, no, that's the first time you've heard it. Uh, okay. Kind of. Uh, you, first time you've heard it, someone here might have heard it. Oh. <clears throat> what, what just happened? Uh, do, I, I be, have I been I out? I I was someone else. Uh, it was what? quite a lovely dream, though. Mine I was felt very empowered. Anxious. Powerful, yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt that. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what did you all see? Because uh, Tricknips was there. Yeah, I thought about that name. I like like I knew it more than I know it now. Is the woman still there? The one who was uh, a construct, maybe? She is. Uh, this all happened very quickly, so uh -huh. pretty much instantly. And, and when uh, you come to... She was already talking, and uh, as soon as you guys started talking to each other, she stopped, but... Uh, she introduces herself, I'm, I'm Iris, and she's got mm. her stick, as I described earlier, uh, her walking stick that she wraps her, both hands around usually. She's got gloves up to her elbow, covering both arms, uh, satin gloves, and um, she says, I, I was afraid that was going to happen. It's, uh, I've been trying to find this guy for a while it's unfortunate he's he's dead uh who what guy Hello. Oh, oh, oh uh i've been looking for him and felix or avner whoever it was of those disgusting creatures 
sent this Avner here. Uh, and Prati, she keeps looking back at you, and also, as you were, um, as you're standing there, um, you, f wh first of all, where do you keep your, um, th the broken piece of the rod? It's in a very special pocket in my, the inside of my cloak. Okay. Uh, you feel it, a, a little tug, um, as you're talking, not like a big one, but just like an, a, an attraction or something. And um, Iris is looking at you um, and uh, saying, I, we have something to talk about, but right now you guys are, <laughs> you guys are sick. Yeah, we do. Um, <laughs> I don't know how long, you guys rolled for how long it will be until yep. something mm -hmm. happens. Yeah. Uh, you guys are most definitely infected, and we need to get you healed. The only thing I can imagine that in this town that would... Uh, the only person that could do it uh, is if the uh, cleric is still alive, but I haven't checked on him in a, in a while. Um, the only other thing I can imagine is one of the beholders of the Strani Acting Company, uh, Mel Pomene she calls herself, has ability to heal. Whenever they put on performances, they can um, heal people, especially volunteers who, volu who do what they say. Um, anyways, we should probably get going. Uh, hey, I hey, Iris. I yeah? Hey, hey, Iris, I have a question for you. Uh, is it normal for us to have visions after being puked on by spores? Um... I haven't heard of that ever happening, but I haven't seen it very often. Um, I've seen these things explode on people, and then I, I didn't talk to the people, but did you see so you had a memory? Uh, it seems so. It, it, it looked like uh, I was in a room, and we were discussing, uh, uh, like, some kind of, like, war or something. There, I don't know. There, there were people who were politically angry at each other. Well, I mean, there is the war conflict going on between the Shard Mine and the mm -hmm, beholders mm -hmm, of the mm -hmm. Strani Acting Company. Um, that's pretty consistent. Uh, there's incursions. They go back and forth at each other. Um, you saw the wall outside that divides the town. That was a result of that conflict. Is the is the wall the southern border of the Dominion? No. Uh the shard mine control the southern mountains, most of the southern mountains, and a lot of the uh, the southern portions just outside the mountains, and uh, the uh, Strani Acting Company took over the Virnal Dominion by essentially kidnapping Countess Kalina and making her act act in their plays so uh it's the worst plays you can imagine uh but uh have you guys searched i'm gonna search the body if you guys don't <laughs> the body of alu <laughs> yeah um this whole during this whole conversation i've been standing off to the side but if if looking now i have a fl the flail in one hand and i have my whip in the other hand and i'm gripping both so tight that my knuckles are white i have sweat pouring down and i'm pale um and i just i i stop what's what's the name iris 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 yeah iris who's four doc kims what can you tell me about them you said you've seen these gas spores. You must know something about them. Fordock Kems is a beholder that was turned traitor to the other beholders and uh, went into the mountains south. I There's n no uh, sign beholders of Beholders of happened. the Shard? There's no beholders in the Shard mine except that one beholder. This beholder, Fordock Kems, was... Worked Got with it. the director. Uh, and, you said, and you said the mountains to the south, still in the Varanal Dominion, right? Yeah, uh, but that is where the 
experiments happen. They steal monsters, trolls, ogres, regular old people, and do exper experiments on them to the south. Uh, uh, she's uh, looking at you, kind of your sweating face, and you're gripping your weapons like... And then she... Um, keep in mind, when she's, when I say looking at you, she turns her head to you, but her eyes aren't ever making eye contact. Uh, it's just a function of where her head is turning. And, uh, what's, I'm actually going to ask Crispy, what's your passive perception? 16. Uh, you notice that when she talks to someone else, she turns her hands this way or that way, facing the people uh, on her, uh, when she's gripping her walking stick. Um, anyway, she, she says to you guys about Crispy, uh, is your friend going to be okay, or is he going to attack us? <laughs> I, I, um, I don't think he's going to attack anyone. <laughs> you, you okay there, Crispy? I'm fine. <laughs> well, I am, but I'm barely restraining myself. <laughs> that was that was like such a such an awesome. <laughs> I am okay. Um, so she's gonna kind of pat down the messed up golem construct body of Alu, and um, she doesn't find much. A few copper. Uh, and uh, she pockets that. Um, and uh, she uh, stands up and says, are you guys ready to try and cure Yes, yourself? please. Take <clears throat> us to Malpomomone. Malpomone. We should look for the cleric. I don't want to get messed up with a Strani acting party. Or Mal they, they, they did what... Uh, they sent the people who did that. To, oh, did that to your face. Mal I'd, ra I'd rather try to find the cleric. If there's a cleric, we can. We can Mal find. Name me. Nihilus, <laughs> Nihilus, get get their name right. Get <laughs> the name of the place right. Mal it's insulting to people. Malnourishment. What? Uh, Nihilus, we can't take you anywhere. <laughs> it's about that time you hear a a uh, cacophony of horns and trumpets. A fanfare. Uh, Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's uh it's not quite <laughs> jazz, it's more of the uh you know, Renaissance fanfare trumpets kind of uh, <laughs> announcing something. Uh, I assume you guys all follow Iris out of the cellar. Uh, yes. what you first noticed exiting the cellar is it's almost like you're in another town. Um this is not the glotopole you were skulking through. Uh, maybe this was glotopole in a time before when the town was younger. Did you time travel again? You don't know. You don't know. Instead of seeing the mottled gray houses and paint and browns and ugly drabness that you were you had saw before, um, all the paint is perfect. It's in bright colors: pastels, blues, pinks, greens. Um, and every structure that was decrepit, some of the, uh, the uh, exteriors had, uh, you know, broken windows and, and uh, clearly unpatched roofs. Those are all fixed. Um, and the town even uh, smells different. Instead of the rot and um, just terrible smells, it smells of spring and cut grass and and lavender um as you step into the street you notice that the dirt and mud that was down there in the town is now covered in cobblestone completely there's not a speck of dirt uh that you can see through the uh seams of the cobblestone are my hooves clip clopping is are they making that sound you were on it because on my notes, that's just like I was describe Nihilus walking on cobblestone. Can and I try a, a tap ditty? Absolutely. Uh, make a performance check. I will describe to uh, 
everyone, remind them what happened to Nihilus. Nihilus had an issue at customs, and a angel who runs a carnival essentially melted his face and turned it into a funhouse mirror, and uh, also turned his feet into hillocks on top of little horses. So uh, he's on a high horse, so to speak. I rolled a 15. Oh, yeah, it doesn't sound bad. It's like, it sounds like a, a tiny mini horse is coming down the road. And I hum as well while I do it. <laughs> I thought you were going uh, with a different song there. Um, no, it's an original. Okay, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> then you hear a announcer down the street towards the center of town. Uh, and the center of town around the wall that divided it, um, a lot of the buildings were destroyed, leveled. Um, and uh, you hear Iris say, Again, well, this is your lucky day, those of you who are sick, but I don't know if I can watch another play. Uh, I'd be sick if I could. Um, and then uh, you look down the street uh, and you see people are coming out of their homes and making their ways their way to the center of town. Um, and uh, also, it's the first time you start to see the sun peek out from behind the clouds, and it's shining right to the center of town. Um, do you, what do you guys want to do? Go to the center of town where everyone in town is going? Uh, Iris... Uh... Is Iris still with us? Yeah, she's with you guys. Okay. Yeah, let's go to the center of town, guys. Let's go see what's over oh. there. This is going to be the strong oh. acting, acting company, and they're going to be weird let's go <laughs> that was i felt like that was a commentary on how weird i can make it which is true you're right uh column a and column b 100 mm -hmm. crispy, <laughs> crispy why, why are you so milk. averse to this what do you know i don't i don't know anything i know they melted your face <laughs> close enough to and and you love it they made bug eyes over here all bug eyes <laughs> Oh yeah, well, that's just but we've great... got to find Mel Pomoni. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody Pimone talks about them like they're here. the worst. So I'm inclined <laughs> to believe the populace that mm. they are just terrible. So oh, let's go see what they're about. Maybe, maybe we can get this sickness cured. I'm I'm not prone to turn into a gas for myself. <laughs> um. Okay. So Iris leads you down. Says, "Come on." And people from the town are all making their way, and they're not happy at all. Oh. Um. This, this. Do you see why? <laughs> I have a um, they haven't seen me person. perform. <laughs> what was that? Just be a good person, and you don't have to worry about them. Uh, mm, Prati, Prati, like person. thinks really hard about that. Like, just be a good person. He's scratching his beak. Just be a good person. Or a good bird. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do that. I'll try to do that, Ashwin. That's a really good point. Be a good person. <laughs> so this is just like, what is good? good <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't know how to be a good person anymore. No, you guys, just, uh... you guys <laughs> see what's happening around you? All this violence. <laughs> you guys have to be optimistic. You know, <laughs> I don't have half of a face. Look at Nihilus, who has. Whatever happened to his face? I'm beautiful. And he's not drowning. So he's fine. Let's get entertained. It's it's. Yeah, it's a show. <laughs> nice. Listen, I have I have bug eyes, and then I have another separate, <laughs> completely distinct, like basically a curse of poison. Dealing with two things right now. <laughs> right, and but you're still alive, and you can you can <laughs> fix those eyes, and you can be less poisoned. Just think on the bright side. Hey, next time, next time something happens to you, just you think on the bright side and don't jump into a bag of holding, okay? No, oh, got him. <laughs> what? There's nothing wrong with jumping into a bag of holding. Now I have learned something. Don't do that again. That's fair. Yeah, when you uh... Let's go to the center of town. <laughs> As you continue, there's a big dissonance between what you're hearing from the townspeople of Glotopole and what you're seeing, this town is beautiful all of a sudden. Uh, 
as I described earlier, and and um, people are saying you hear them just eavesdropping. If I have to watch this damn play again, I'm gonna punch one of those floating balls in the eye. Um, and then uh, one of them says, "It's the m improv scenes that are the worst." I feel like I'm turning inside out. I'm. I honestly, I honestly get relieved when one of the volunteers who does the improv with them finishes or gets disintegrated. It's. I, I like feel relieved. Uh, and then a lady um, says. The lady with the fire hair is great, though. I wish she went last so I'd have something to look forward to. Um, and uh, her, it's, it's probably her caretaker, her daughter or something says, Yeah, Mom, that dancing sword's amazing. Uh, she always looks terribly sad, though. Oh. Uh, her and Countess Kalina. And the announcer uh, is continuing to repeat the same message as people are making their way to the center of town. Come one, come all. And it's kind of half-hearted announcing. The Strani Acting Company presents the Cockled Boggler Variety Show. And then the... I'm sorry, the what? The cock cockled? Uh, what? Well, guess what? He's repeating it so you can hear it again. <laughs> come one, come all. The Strani Acting Company presents the Cockled Boggler Variety Show. And, uh, I heard cuckold that second time. Cockled? I'm just going <laughs> to spell it. You guys, this is like the, the, the next stage of evolving uh, players giving shit to DMs about names. <laughs> it's like you're pick. I have to spell names. Uh, don't get me wrong. I do it as a player to Brian uh routinely um so uh I'm, I'm not too offended but it's c-o-c-k-l-e-d nihilus and um <laughs> there you go mm. so the announcer keeps saying and one of the times he goes cockled boggler variety show and uh you see a green beam of light shoot diagonally up into the air, and at that same time, as you're making your way to the center of town, uh, the announcements stop. Um, as you get closer to the center of town, you see that the dividing wall that you'd seen previously is no longer petrified on one side and overgrown with fungus on the other. In, instead, where the wall used to be, the ground slopes up, and it's Beautifully uh, grassy. It's perfectly manicured lawn and rises. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, guys, I think we traveled through time again. <laughs> what? There was, there, <sighs> a wall? there was a wall there. You traveled Typical. Before. <laughs> Typical BBFs. There, there was a wall right in the center of town, right? I'm not crazy, right? I don't know. Uh, I've been looking at my own reflection no, I, in so, this mirror. Rewind. Are you not from now? I'm I'm from now. Are you guys like not from, from now? I thought I was from now or from our now. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm from the now I've always been in. So you guys are from a different now. <laughs> no, we're from been. now. We're from now. I but think we're we're not in now. All of us are not in now anymore. Right. What's 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 just start shifty eyes now? looking at you guys. <laughs> Where is that moonshine? I would like to try some of this. I don't know what this now. You get used to it, or uh, uh... <laughs> I was gonna call you Orson. Well, you are Orson. <laughs> get used to it, Orson. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what's going on now. I just I, I want to come I back. I think we to went. This, I think we're in the past. Guys. We're in the past now. How are oh. we in the past? We didn't go through anything. So unless. Unless the wall was destroyed and every piece of it was taken away. So Iris hops in and she says, no, you're not time traveling. This is what they do. Uh, they have um, some sort of magic that can project a new terrain. Uh, I want to say it's an illusion, but I've never seen illusion magic that you can climb on and that you that can that can handle people like we're going to this, where the wall was, it slopes up and it's green grass. 
and that's where we gather in front of the stage and the stage is beautiful that wasn't there before you guys saw it uh, so is everyone fake no i don't think so she starts oh. like lightly touching herself <laughs> uh well, not not us iris the people i don't think so i think it's just the terrain uh and so as you're making your, your way down there you're cresting a hill where the uh all the people around you are going to this announce where it was announced are cresting a hill uh on top of this hill there's a plateau where a stage is spontaneously sprung up um there is it's wood it's a wood stage and it's framed by ornately uh carved stone columns uh and then a purple velvet curtain is at the front of the stage and people are sitting on the grass in front of the uh stage and uh you notice at the same time uh that guards some of these guards you've seen but you haven't seen them this heavily armored um you saw them when you were doing the skill challenge and uh you ran into a spectator and two guards uh anyways they are heavily armed guards and they're surrounding this plateau facing outwards and all of their heavy plate armor is embossed with uh the twin faces uh twin masks of comedy and tragedy um it's beautiful armor uh i fair enough uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> Sorry, inside joke. We all know what we're laughing at. Okay. Um. So, uh, where do you guys? Where would you? Uh, Let's sit in the front. No. Iris follows Ashwin. <laughs> I no. will also sit in the front. From leaning to talk to this beholder, I feel like the front might be where we need to be. Come on, Silas, you should be in the front. I really hope but they have that's corn That's obviously here. going to happen. I, I really hope they have corn as a snack. Not popcorn. Just Iris, pre, pre pops. Iris like corn. Dry, dry ass corn. Like, like corn on the cob? No, just like just corn. I, just like on the stock? Unpopped, loose corn. Like kernels. Hmm. Oh, okay. Like, like how you feed to chickens. Are you calling him a chicken? Oh, he's just the most adorable uh, little chicken. There's not going to be food, guys. <laughs> the Strani Acting Company doesn't provide food. They barely care that we're here, except that wow. if we leave or make any negative comments, they charm people or they disintegrate them or they petrify them and take them back to Dedrinsk, the capital in the north. So... Noted. Nihilus, don't say anything. <laughs> no. no promise. <laughs> you can oh, write it in the book. <laughs> You'll be fine. Too bad reviews. They can watch it later. Mm-mm. So, uh, no you guys take a seat in the front, <laughs> and people are talking and saying the same shit. Uh, this, I, can't, I can't handle five hours of this. I can't do it. I'm just, I can't. Uh, and then you hear the trumpets blast again, signaling the start of the show. <laughs> and, and, uh, oh yeah, we're going to role play every minute of that. It's going to be a one-to-one value. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> the crowd quiets as a young man with a baby face is pushed through the curtains, uh, to the front of the stage. Like, uh, he doesn't want to be there, but he's just reluctantly doing it. Um, and he's got a red velvet cloak that does not fit him. It's way too big for him. And underneath, you can see that it's peasant clothes, very poor peasant clothes. Um, and uh, he's holding a sheet of parchment, just shaking. He's, he's, he's w- extremely white, sweaty, nervous sweat. Um, and from the back of the crowd, you hear a woman exclaim, Josiah, my boy, before her cries are muffled uh, by someone. Um are we sitting in a particular order? Because I would like to turn to my left and, and whisper something. Yeah, I mean, you guys decide where you want to sit. Okay, well, I guess I'll be next to Ashwin, and I and I lean down, and I go, this is going to be good. I'm so excited. Uh, 
so, I'll be on the other side of Ashwin. Okay. And I kind of <laughs> hear that, like, I, we just saw that, didn't we? <laughs> I'm on uh, the other side of, of Orson, and I go, is this part of the show? <laughs> Maybe. We'll, we'll have to see. I'm just standing at the end with my arms crossed, totally silent. <laughs> You're not going to sit down on the grass? All of you need to sit down on the grass. Oh, yeah, everyone... because it makes sense that we're sitting down. I might not we're have... Front. Yeah, I might not have said that people are sitting. <laughs> I just like the everyone. the image of Crispy just standing. <laughs> um, That's the... a bold choice. <laughs> uh, Iris... My arms are still crossed, but I'm sitting. <laughs> Iris takes a seat as well. Um, the young man on stage, Josiah clears his throat and says, Welcome, fair compatriots of the Viranol. Prepare to... Speak up! <laughs> and people shush you from the back. Uh, prepare to... He, he gets even more nervous. Prepare to be... Oh, no. to be Astounded by what the Strani Acting Company has put together today? Six hours of entertainment oh, of the highest regard. Uh, but before we get to the play written by the great Egoid and directed by uh, directed by the director, uh, the the prolific Ooh. the prolific the and uh, uh, pretty d the director. Uh, uh, we have five minutes of blade dancing to warm you up. That oh. that leaves five hours and um, fifty five minutes for the play <laughs> entitled "The Cockled Boggler." <laughs> oh, uh, there's an improv intermission, of course, as always, where a Ooh. lucky few volunteers will be able to improvise with great. Artists of the Strani Acting Company. As Josiah finishes, he turns around facing the curtains but does not go through. Uh, people have begun cheering and chanting, Heal! 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 And after a few seconds, the curtain parts and a beam, a soft yellow uh, beam of light hits him and people cheer even louder in celebration. Uh, Josiah runs off the stage to the back of the crowd and is embraced by his family. The crowd uh, is silenced by the low rumble of drums building into a steady rhythmic beat as the curtains part fully across the stage, revealing Cynthia and Girasol. Uh, Cynthia, do you want to describe what uh, Girasol looks like in her the her performance sure i would love to so um i yeah Girasol comes on of a uh, fiery hair um a black i don't want to say a black eye but like it looks like a black part of her face she has a third eye coming through here and then regular normal eye on the other side uh dressed completely like a normal adventure of swords on her, um, and she has a uh, scarf that, if you have a very good sight, would notice that it's bladed on her hips. Um, starts kind of coming in and playing. Whoa. <laughs> so she'll start playing stuff like that while the drums are And um, slowly starts belly dancing. Um, as she does uh, the chimes, you can see sparks of fire kind of coming off of them and starts to ignite the, the stage into flames. As she starts walking through the flame, you could obviously tell she's immune to fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, so starts dancing, um, belly dancing, takes out one of um, her swords and starts balancing it on her hip. And then she starts balancing it on her nose. She starts balancing on top of her head. Can go down. Do I notice that there are different in the audience DM? Um, make a perception check. You decide if, if Girasol would be, uh, you know, maybe she's done this act so many times that she's able to kind of half focus on the audience or if she's so consumed by it, if you want to, uh, give yourself disadvantage, you can do that or you can just do a regular role for perception. Uh, regular role perception. That's a 13. Um, 
Yeah, you've you've seen one the the lady with the walking stick before with the satin gloves up to her elbows, um, but especially Nihilus and and <laughs> Prodi with the bug eyes, you have never seen them before. You've done this performance in Glotopole many times with the acting company, uh, and you definitely feel a. Uh, a uh, tug from one of your items uh, in uh, on your person, um, and also would, does Girasol do anything with the dancing sword, uh, which can essentially just perform on its own? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so she uh, she would whisper her her favorite word, and you can start seeing the um, from her head the balancing on her head. You start seeing it float off her head. Cool. Start dancing. Excellent. So you guys are uh, Ashwin. Can I climb on Nihilus's shoulder? You can uh -huh. try. <laughs> it's up to Nihilus if he lets you. Um, yeah, I'm gonna like. Uh. <laughs> like I'm just trying to, to climb up to get a better vantage point. Be like, Jerusal, Jerusal, is that you? Okay. Uh, well, well, it's up to you, Ashwin, how, Nihilus isn't having it, do you guys want to, um... Well, I'll just be struggling, like, I think I'll allow her to, like, right. go up, but I'm just gonna be like, what the hell? Sure. I definitely slap you with my tail. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've got daggers, I'll cut this thing off. I have a lot more swords, too! <laughs> yeah, uh, you... Hi! So, I'm going to shoot message to her. Okay. Shut up. I am not here because I'm excited to be here. Just, I just figured out the way to get me out of here, please. Uh, keep dancing. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, if no one has anything else to say, I will uh, conclude this part of the... What are you doing? What are, why are you... Why are you climbing on top of Nihilus? Because I want to make sure I wasn't crazy and I saw my friend. Oh, I okay. Know her. Um, well, we might have a side mission, you guys. <laughs> Prati, Prati says to Ashwin, uh, "Hey, did she, was, did she not speak her truth either? Like, what's with the third eye?" I, I don't know. I don't recognize her like that. I met her and she looked perfect before. Um, can't really say with her deformities now. Uh. <laughs> Man. <laughs> um, the people behind people you, are you guys just whispering uh, to each other? Or no, you just... I think we're talking out loud. Yeah, people would yeah. definitely sh shush you, including Iris, and they would be telling you like, if you guys don't be quiet, uh, you're you're gonna get petrified or even worse. Uh, Did someone from behind tell us that? Oh, people all around you are like oh. moving away while they're trying. Like at first they were saying that to you, and now they're like moving away, and there's like a space between you guys in the front. Well, Nihilus definitely turns around and faces them and says, "Shh, you're ruining the show." Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, How far is Girasol from where we are? Uh, like 15 feet. The stage is probably five feet off the ground. Um, so okay. depending on where she is on the stage, uh, you know, at the closest she's 15 feet. Then what I, what Orson would like to do is use Mage Hand to try to find a piece of jewelry or some, something loose on Girasol to <laughs> grab her attention, to drag her to um ashwin's attention because he has no idea what the message is he yeah wants yeah to help ashwin yeah for sure um <laughs> is, is there anything on you girasol that would he would yep oh <laughs> okay right. so so orson uses a chance like here let me get your attention <laughs> what's the um how much weight can mage hand Five pounds? Five pounds. 
how 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 um how much would that annoy Girasol? Quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, right here. Doesn't take a lot. <laughs> Quite a bit. Okay. Um, would you say you you did that at the beginning of the uh, performance, Ashwin? Yes. Okay. Um, so you let her uh, continue dancing. Uh, Orson, is that correct, or you just keep mage handing? <laughs> well, Such a weird well, verb. After, I would say that after about like thirty seconds, trying to figure out where to pull on Gearsol that's appropriate but not embarrassing, <laughs> and I thought, okay, the top of her head that would be easy play. <laughs> just use mage hand to kind of like pull on the top of her head towards Ashwin in Ashwin's direction. <laughs> Gearsol, anything? How do you react? Do you ignore it? Uh, no, I definitely would not ignore <laughs> Excuse me, what is going on? What is, I don't understand. What uh, uh, Are you trying to get my... Who is trying to touch me? So when Girasol does that, you guys see uh, five beholders rise above the top of the stage, and they're looking down at the front. And they're not happy. Just keep dancing. Just keep dancing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm just like clapping along with the music. <laughs> you hear a six foot diameter, white scaled, white eyed, uh, with an hourglass iris, daggers for teeth, uh, yell down at you guys. Whatever you're doing, stop now. Nihilus just points down. <laughs> uh, I, I lean. <laughs> Wait, do you not want us to watch the show anymore? I don't want you to interrupt the performance again. I suggest you all volunteer at intermission. Oh. And, okay, and uh, they stay up there uh, above the um, top of the stage, just kind of watching. Um, while she continues her, her performance, um, do you continue to mage, to mage hand her? Oh, if it hasn't been pulled off, then I continue to do so. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. <laughs> uh. You know it's not me. Clearly. <laughs> Yeah, magic. <laughs> All right, so um, a light blue beam of magic shoots out of the uh, the uh, a smaller beholder about four feet diameter um, is a uh, wrinkled gray skin, violet eye. Uh, again, uh, a weird shaped iris. This one's in the shape of a keyhole. One of its small eyes, and for those of you who don't know what beholders look like, um, this is a oh. beholder. Oh, Cute. God. Uh, Ryan already knew that, uh, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So one of the small eye stalks shoots a light blue beam at Orson. And make a wisdom save, Orson. All right. Let's see, wisdom save. He's not very bright. Um, that would be a thirteen. You see, Orson, uh, who is sitting up, just completely falls on his back, uh, just out. Nihilus um, claps. Yay! <laughs> Whoa, what just happened? And Pratty goes over to Orson and just kind of like... <laughs> you know, it's like... And... It's like checking him out. He's... You, uh, you're a pretty smart uh, bird. I always struggle to get the right pronoun for you, Pratty. <laughs> uh, so... Um, yeah, he's. You think he's asleep, is all. Um, but uh, 
if you guys would like to let the show continue. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so <laughs> Jirasol finishes her performance and people cheer and um, you also hear people going, well, that's the worst, the best part of the show. So now we got the worst to go. Oh man, I wish I brought more alcohol. Uh, and so um, the cockle boggler begins the play. Uh, and a woman comes out in the middle of the <laughs> of the stage, uh, and people around you start muttering. She's a beautiful woman. She has um, a massive royal purple parade dress. It seems like it's not obviously so it's huge. So it's not obviously something you'd lounge around in. Uh, it's royal purple, three foot tall headpiece, and just floating above the headpiece is like a a bouquet of uh, eye stalks kind of rotating and changing colors. Um, and she's standing in the middle of the stage and, and she is she doesn't look happy to be there. She uh, doesn't look scared. She just looks sick of this, of where, what she's doing and where she's at. Um, and uh, someone in the crowd is talking to another person They and you hear them say, uh, they always have her wearing the dress her mother wore on her wedding day. It's kind of oh. cruel. Um, so the Countess Kalina says, after a few seconds standing on stage, just deadpan. Oh no, I have been captured by Shardmine cultists. Who will save me? And you see uh, a be beholder enter the stage. This one is... Five foot diameter, wrinkled uh, gray skin. It's the violet. It's the same one you just saw put uh, Orson to sleep. By the way, Orson, you wake up after a minute. Um, and uh, so you see the same beholder enter the stage. And uh, he goes, Oh, glorious ruin, from whence doth murderous indiscretion abstain thy kin's bile. Nay! And just... Shakespearean, shitty Shakespearean dialogue doesn't even make sense. What doth despised, naive imbibe not of death's in indolence? And uh, Countess Kalina is just not even looking at him, staring straight ahead. Uh, and soon after that, people who look, um, any magic users in out of you guys make an arcana check? Can I? Uh, you already know what's happened to this person. Uh, they send people out uh, to essentially be the villain if they don't like someone or if, like, they want... So let's say somebody's family member is deathly ill or uh, they want to save their family in some way, they will sacrifice themselves and allow themselves to be... play the villain in one of the plays. Um... And so they will willingly go out onto the stage knowing that they're going to be killed. Or if it's a criminal who's fighting them, they will charm them. You know that these beholders have a ton of enchantment magic. Um, so this, this man comes on stage and he's got ripped cloth. Um, and as he's stumbling out on stage, what did everyone get on the Arcana check? I'm sorry. 13. 15. Uh, Prodi and Orson, you think he's definitely charmed in some way. Uh, he's stumbling out there, and this beholder shoots a green beam at this guy, and you see him turn to dust uh, before your eyes. And people in the crowd aren't making any noises during this whole performance. Um, and then the, uh, the Countess says... My hero, thou art celestial weapon upon cockled bogglers, the famed crusaders of the cockbogs. Um, and this keeps going on, and it's this, it's literally just rotating beholders, uh, people t kidnapping her, like the similar t look to the person who just got disintegrated, will take her. They will go off stage, and then they'll bring her back on stage, and then the uh, Beholder will float on and 
quote unquote save her. Um, and so this next beholder uh, is a uh, shaded pink, similar to the one I showed you. Um, for is this the second time we're seeing this now? Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know if I'm going to describe them all, but uh, pink, shaded pink, about half the size of the director, the one that you talked to you guys. Um, and uh, she's got double rows of tiny needle-like teeth uh, in her mouth. And... Um, or its mouth. And uh, the same thing happens. And the beholder goes... O oh, royal lechery, hark, thou art thy virtues, mildew, debased men messenger. People are just sighing behind you. Um, again, this person gets disintegrated. This The next person that stumbles on stage, um, Countess again says, hark, from whence doth evil commerce expostulate eternity's entrails upon thy bosom. Villain, I say. Thy name is Cockled Bogler. Um, Nihilist, <laughs> Nihilist goes, Oh! <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, Prodi just, like, slides. Make a dexterity save, Ni or, yeah, Nihilist. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Let me see what my dexterity is, which is not high. Okay. Uh, 17. Okay. Um, you are a clutch saver. Um, so, uh, nothing... What, what happened? What did I save from? So, basically, a brownish, yellowish beam, similar to the other beams. They're all, like, the same-looking beams. Comes out and hit, hits you. And you feel your body stiffen up, start to stiffen up, uh, but uh, you manage to shrug it off. Uh, I shimmy it off. And uh, <laughs> do you do anything else, or do you are you no, just, I just quiet? Sit there. <laughs> okay, I sit there. <laughs> My heart is beating. You don't know what I'm looking at on this, the possibilities here that I'm rolling for. Um, anyways, so. Uh, the... I just whisper right now, I, how bad is it to volunteer? This is horrible. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, Ashwin, I don't know if, if she has seen plays before. Um, so if this is the first play... Uh, you've seen Ashwin. How does she react? I think you're muted. Um, oh, no, you're not. I think right now she's probably crawled into like a ball next to Nihilus, probably dozing off. Okay. <laughs> An appropriate reaction. So this goes on a few more times uh, for about two and a half hours. <laughs> Jesus. Well, oh Nihilus definitely God. also just crawls up into a ball. Fair enough. <laughs> and fell asleep. Um, then they announce intermission. Uh, and uh, they begin to call for volunteers for the improv show uh, that's coming on at the intermission. Is, um, is uh, Ashwin still asleep? You can wake her. It's up this. to her. You wake me up? No, I'm not going to wake her up. I'm going to lift her onto the stage. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going uh, to let my, my whip. Because she's going to be a like volunteer tickle, when they tickle come Tickle her back. awake. <laughs> hey, hey, how did they get up here? Go, well, Ashwin. We're, we're going to be volunteering pretty soon. Why do I have don't to don't you worry. You don't have to go. You don't. I think there's an uh, improv show starting. Nihilus thought it would be funny to put you up there. Iris. No. I'm going to put you off the, off the stage. Fair enough. Uh, okay, you should leave. So <laughs> Iris told you that volunteers, uh, she said that you can get from one of these beholders. Uh, she pointed to one beholder when Orson got knocked out and said, that's Melpomene. 
this is a shaded black smooth skin beholder. Normal uh, eye, normal to you guys. Uh, just metallic circle iris um, and a smaller mouth than all the other beholders, but with human teeth. Um, Ooh. Oh, and uh, it's even more scary. It is. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought that too. Um, so, uh, people are coming on stage. They all look deathly ill. Um, I figure this is the best way we can get up there and uh, talk to this Malpomene. So, yeah. let's get on. Nihilus Prati. Yeah, let's do it. <sighs> I'm fine. I'm going to go take a nap again. <laughs> so Not bad. I. Wind. Ashwin, no, Ashwin. Don't you want to talk? Don't you want to talk to find your friend Girasol? Yeah, but I don't need healing. I don't. I don't want to get involved in this right now. Don't fall asleep, Ashwin. This is my big debut. Okay. Also, one of us might get disintegrated, so you might <laughs> watch that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, so, you guys start lining up. Um, kind of to the side of the stage, and you see Girasol. Uh, Girasol, after your performance, um, they have you kind of guarded by the two same guards, Sam and Elliot, uh, who wear this full plate, and they're kind of idiots. You, you, you could easily take them if you wanted to, but um, they. you also know that the Beholders would come after you if you um, just blatantly tried to escape, uh, which is why you still are under their, um, uh, you're still imprisoned by them. Uh, but as the first person comes onto the stage, uh, the, the, um, pink beholder floats down to perform improv with this random villager. She's super, uh, short, probably middle-aged. And as that happens, uh, there's a rumble beneath your feet. Uh, you don't know where it's coming from. Um, people start looking around. The improvisers, the two on stage, are um, they? They had asked for a. Uh, the beholder had asked for a word. Um, <laughs> And, uh, I thought you were going to say they were playing Zip Zap Zop or something. <laughs> I almost thought about making something like that, but I just didn't want to... Uh, uh, Teach you know, your show? And make it more uh, narrative-based. Um, so after the shaking, people are looking around, talking, like, what the hell is happening? Uh, you hear someone screaming like a soldier... They're coming! And about that time, from the middle, from the, uh, below you, a giant purplish worm comes straight out of the ground. Um, and I need everyone who's watching the stage to make a perception check. Are we on the stage or watching? You're off to the side of the stage. You can see what's going on because you're in line to do improv, essentially. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Nine. Okay. Seven. Twelve. Well, because I have to roll with disadvantage. Uh, no, no, you only roll with disadvantage when you're trying to see a face. So, like, if you're trying to identify. Oh, okay. So, if you were like, I'm looking 21. for Ashwin. Okay. Uh, Jirasol, would she be watching this stage? Or she's probably seen this shit already and it's bad improv, so. According to my role, I got a four. So, <laughs> well, she just kind of, yeah, whatever. Uh, Ashwin. I got a nine. Okay, so Nihilus. Um, you see this purplish worm erupt from the ground. First of all, all of you see that it's purple, and you also see that um, there's mold and there's spores kind of growing on the side of it, um, along with crystals that... Those of you who fought the uh, crystal troll a few episodes ago recognize. Um, but Nihilus, you see in the, in the maw of this huge beast as it's erupting from the earth uh, around this beholder, this pink beholder, um, you see a flash of, of light from the, from the mouth of this thing before it envelops the beholder. 
Um, you're pretty. Mal, Mal, Malpomene? No. That one? Um, oh, okay. This one is uh, Thalia, the uh, pink one. Um, oh, the pink one. Okay. Anyway, so you're pretty sure a spell, a damage spell or something was shot out of this worm's mouth before it slams shut on this beholder. People freak the fuck out. And um, it's about at this point, if you guys are looking around, you start to see hundreds of what you saw before on the road, intellect devourers, brains with feet, um, running through the town. Proddy? Proddy, tur Proddy turns to Orson and he's just like, is this part of the show? <laughs> um, I don't know, but I don't like it. And Everyone's freaking out. I think we should freak out too. Are they close to us? They're coming for you guys and... Uh, Girasol, your guards have left you, nah. and uh, Iris is telling those of you in the, on the stage to, uh, or those of you off the stage, not waiting to do beautiful improv. Um, we need to grab them and go. If you or fight, what are you guys? Whose side are you on? She's like, do you guys know what you want to do? And she starts pushing you guys towards the volunteers who are at the side of the stage. Girasol, you see the uh, mirrored-faced one and the bug-eyed bird as well. And um, Ashwin, if you're listening to her, uh, you will see Ashwin as well. Huh. So, um, the behold, the other four beholders uh, are attacking... Um, these little things with eye rays. You see different colored eye rays shooting at these intellect devourers. Um, and then they turn their attention to something else uh, and stop firing. Uh, they see a bunch of crystal trolls following in behind the the intellect devourers. So it's just, Iris says to you guys, like, this this type of incursion hasn't happened for a very long time. We need to take cover or get the hell out of here uh, now because those those brain things will eat your brain. And you do see uh, these these walk these tiny pomeranian sized brains um, going up to people, emitting something. You don't know what it is, and then some of the people fall prone, and then a few seconds later the brains disappear and the person that was on the ground raises up again and then starts beating on some of the people of the city. Uh, oh. Also, you do see some of the people in the crowd when uh, that worm jumped out, started murdering people around them. Uh, so that's the situation. Everything's fine. Right. <laughs> hey, well, I, I, I turned to my fellow volunteers in line and said, boys, we should make ourselves scarce. This doesn't look like what we're improv for. <laughs> the show must go on. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Not really. Not really. <laughs> Let's go find the others. And uh, I start running back to where we left the others. Okay. Um, on the stage. Jirasol, what are you doing? Uh, I, do I see them scatter? Like, we Yeah, you also... you, you um. Ashwin, are you listening to Iris and going towards them at the side of the stage? Ashwin and Orson? Mm, I'm probably looking for the other guys and following them. Yeah, that's what she's Iris yeah, is trying yeah. to do. Yeah, Orson, you're the same? You're trying to find your other... Yeah, right. Right now, I'm kind of watching because I can't tell like who to fight for, so I'm going to look at the rest of my crew and see what they're going to do. Right. Uh, come, come, come. So, uh, the beholders are focusing their attention on these trolls, and some of them are being affected by these beams, some of them aren't, um, there's dozens of them, and then you hear, uh, the 
the first beholder who addressed you guys, uh, the biggest one, the one with the white scales, white hourglass iris, and daggers, for, like literal daggers for teeth, like weapons, uh, um, yells something to... Wait, do you guys speak deep speech or deep speech? Nope. No. That's nope. Okay. Nope. Um, I... You do? No, no, I'd like to do something, though. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, first, the director, what you know, who you know as the director, yells something in deep speech to the other beholders, and they start taking off north out of town from whence they came. Um, the soldiers who were surrounding the plateau are fighting the intellect of ours and all the <clears throat> citizenry that have been taken over. Um, and Jirisol, what would you like to do? Um, I'd like to cast uh, Tasha's Hideous Laughter on the Beholder. Okay. Um, you would have to move uh, your full your full movement over yeah. there across the stage as they're leaving. Yes. And what's the save on that? Wisdom saving throw. Uh, you got to get a fourteen. Okay. Save, save, save. Roll the nine. Wisdom is plus uh -huh. seven. Uh, so that's a 16. Whoa. Damn. Uh, but you yeah. do see when you do that, which one did you... I'll give you some options here. Um, would you have sent it at the director, the one with the white scales, white out, or... or or the, Who was the dumbest? <laughs> the dumbest would be... Um, probably the... The pitted red one uh, with the yellow eye. Has a double iris. Really creepy. Uh, we'll go with that one. And uh, this one, it, it turns it... Some of its eye stalks looks directly at you because it knows someone cast it tried to cast a spell on it but it doesn't stop and it continues um it's 20 feet above you continues out uh retreating north back to the probably um so uh girasol is kind of diagonal from you guys unless you guys met at the front of the stage um big bedfellows we'll say you're all together with iris right now um, Ashwin, since you were messaging Girasol, do you want to do anything? Do you want to try to find her? Or mm, I look around to see if I can see her. Make uh, a perception check. Girl, I, I could do this. Yeah. Uh, I I throw her on my shoulders so she's a bit taller. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, this voice came out of nowhere. Yeah, it was like the voice of God. <laughs> I throw her on my shoulders. So <laughs> uh, disembodied voice. Uh, Ashton, what'd you get? I'm sorry. A 16. Okay, yeah, you see her. It's not hard. She's got... Is your hair fire or lava? Lava. Wow, that's in intimidating as shit. Like, if you when get, I get mad, it trips. Oh my oh. god! So if somebody like, if you're, if somebody serves you like a drink, a, a server or something, or your food, if they get too close, do they get burn damage? They can. Oh man, <laughs> that sucks. Uh, <laughs> you must have to tip well if you're burning your servers. Um, well, I will say that her boyfriend has a tiefling, so fire resistance. Okay. Um, so you see her kind of staring up at these retreating beholders as this town is overrun with brains with little paws. They're adorable, kind of, um, and trolls and such. So, Ashwin, what do you do? her a message shut up you don't <laughs> then you don't know me get the countess we gotta go uh the countess <laughs> the countess 
was, along with the Beholders, was taken away by a bunch of royal guard. Um, so they're kind of following a good distance behind these levitating Beholders. Uh, what would you like to do, Ashwin? Talk to your fellow uh, adventurers. Yeah, I'm going look to look to Crispy. Like, who's the Countess again? She was the bored one at the beginning of the play, but it uh, looks like she's been <laughs> taken away. Uh, we should also make ourselves scarce, like I was telling the others. Um, and I start running with Ash on my shoulders. Um, we need to find her! In, in the least dangerous direction. Where did where did Mel Pomone go? Uh, she she's took off. North. Oh, man. Should we go follow her? I think we best find the cleric, uh, wherever they are. Looks like... Uh, no, Pomene is, is heading out of town. Well, that, sh that show ate up a lot of the hours I have left. Mm-hmm. How many hours in are you guys? Well, how, I don't know how, how pretty much show was. was the show was. Right. <laughs> until it stopped. So we got halfway yeah. through, so we're two and a half yeah, hours in, three hours yeah, two in. Two and a half hours or three hours. Yeah. Can I walk up to them? Like, yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm going to walk over to them. So oh, now you come. Yes. <laughs> Now I'm coming over. Do you just do you just walk slowly as all this fucking chaos is yeah. happening? Okay. <laughs> just This is nothing. Badass. Okay. Yeah. This is nothing. Um, so you guys are figuring out where you're going or not, because if not, I could tell you a plan where to go. Hi. Yes. Please oh, tell us. I, Hi. Also no, no, no. Oh, I, I got an action. Um if there's a bunch of these like mini brains coming towards us, yeah. Like about how many are are there and how far away from us are they? Hundreds. You have a minute maybe before they get to you? Okay, then I want to cast... I, I would like to cast Summon Lesser Demons. Okay. So, oh. um, in the direction of those so that they are a suitable distraction. Sure. Uh, so, just <laughs> for, for my... Um, I guess, to help me out. Um, mm -hmm. So let's figure out right now what you guys as a group with Girasol want to do. Uh, Girasol, you look at Prodi and Crispy and Nihilus, and they look like they are um, sick. Uh, they've started to feel the effects mm -hmm. of whatever they have. Let me just check something real quick. Okay. All right. Killing the creature. All right. So half that time, you guys aren't there yet. What did you guys roll on that time? 24. Yeah, you guys 20. are fine. Um, I got a 27, though. Okay. Yeah, you're still fine. Uh, you're even more fine than the other two. Mm -hmm. Uh so they look sick, and you know that um, you have used... You have Lesser Restoration, right? Yes, I do. Uh, you've used that on other sick people before. Uh, so uh, just giving you that knowledge. Right. So my first thing was to actually try to assess, and my I can obviously see that they're, like, legit sick. Yeah, and Iris is is you've heard this this woman uh, that you've seen before with the stick and the uh, satin gloves up to her elbow. Um, kind of cloudy eyes. You think she might be blind uh, from her eyeballs. Um, but uh, she's still saying, you guys are sick. We need to get out of here and find someone to heal you guys. Oh, hold on one second. I'm going to grab the uh, Kenku. Seems to be the less mean one. <laughs> um and i'm gonna say i hope you trust me and i'm gonna cast lesser restoration on cool uh you allow it i assume prodi trust you yeah i trust you <laughs> what can go wrong uh so yeah you feel a lot better when she does that um and uh Ah, dang, I still have the bug eyes. <laughs> still have the bug eyes. You, really? you're, you're no longer diseased. Yeah. The bug oh, eyes. Oh, my God. Thanks. Thank you. I don't know what you did, but that, that worked. Thank you. Uh, it's in bar. Don't worry. If you ever need a 
If you ever need a lock locksmith, I'm your guy. I, okay, I don't know if I'm gonna have any, but thank you. Unless you, I, you can get me out of the jail, please. Yeah. <laughs> I'm your ja- get out of jail free card. Would love to do the introductions, but uh, brains are getting closer and closer to us. We need to and trolls get out. and trolls. One of We've those doozy, and there's a bunch. There. So, um, how good are you with fighting? Pardon me. How good are all of you with fighting? They're phenomenal hey, fighters, okay. but uh, Brady, not this Brady. many bad guys. Can I hold perception <laughs> check on this one? Or like, you mean uh, insight? <laughs> like, to see, you want to see if they're yes, yes. insight? Okay. Insight. If they're lying to me. Sure. Go ahead. Hold on, I gotta find my skills again. Are you doing it on all of us? Just in general. Yeah, that's uh, nine. You think they're pretty confident in their skills, and uh, <laughs> um, they believe they're very good fighters. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. So basically the way we can do this, guys, is we can do another skill challenge. Uh, I need to know where you're trying to go. Iris would say to you that... Um, uh, we can go find the cleric in the forest uh, to the southwest um, or you just saw one of them get healed by Girasol. Um you can talk to her about that or you can decide if you're going to fight the beholders or you're going to fight the shard mine or if you want to talk to try to find like i need to know what you're going to do there's so many options like well nihilus like, well, is definitely going to talk to jerisol and and see if she can um favor yeah. him a little bit <laughs> i, w- I want to see if we can get out of the imminent danger with jerisol since she can heal us and and iris That's my goal <laughs> um iris looks like she's pretty well attached herself to you guys and uh yeah. um and if she has like a place in the in the town we can go yeah she like, she have, like a house <laughs> she is suggesting that um we we you either go to her house she don't she does she's never seen this big of an incursion or you can try to we can she says we can fend for ourselves in the forest. There's stuff in there that's pretty bad, but uh, I'm not too bad at combat myself. Um, uh, Iris, why don't you just take us to your home? Okay. And we'll reevaluate from there. So, uh, do you... Girasol, can you come with? I, I think so. It might be a fight, though, because I am not supposed to leave here. Yeah, and oh. those beholders are pretty well out of sight. Sa- out of sight now along with the countess they started um uh not levitating her but uh using their telekinetic ray which you've seen them use before uh to essentially bring her she starts floating through the air um they're way out of sight um and uh you've never been more free in your time here in the Viranal dominion let's Uh, go (laughs) <laughs> uh, seems like your wardens are uh, taking a break for the time being <laughs> so Iris since she knows the town well I will have you guys do like a what do you guys think you'd use to first what skill that you're proficient in what do you think uh, you would use first as a group to kind of not be to get stealth. get to where you're going stealth okay are you proficient Yes. Okay, so uh, the way this is going to work is there's a DC set, and Crispy is going to roll for everyone. There's a certain number of successes you're trying to get, and you're trying not to fail because there's a certain number of fails you get that will have some consequences. Um, And you guys came real close last time. Uh, Go ahead, Crispy. Let's see, that's a 7. Do it with 7. Do, do it with what? advantage because you have Iris with you and you know this. She knows the town. That did better. Nineteen. Yeah, you uh, make your way much 
further through the town. This is a very short skill check since you're not trying to leave the town. You're just going to her uh, home, which is also under another home in a cellar. Um, uh, so you need to make one more skill check. There's people who are seemingly possessed in some way, attacking each other. Um, parents are attacking children. Children are attacking parents. Uh, as well as the crystal trolls and the intellect devourers who don't seem to be, all they seem to be trying to do is knock people on the ground unconscious and then what you see is that happening and then them disappearing. Oh, 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 there's a baby beating up a grandma. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my god. No, I think it's the grandma's crazy. winning. <laughs> oh man. The baby keeps keeps coming back, like, some, just walks and it couldn't walk before, just walks. Oh, I can't. I can't even watch this. This is that's so adorable. Can I use mage hand to kind of just put push the baby's face oh like away and sure. just keep it away from the grandma? Sure. Right here. <laughs> uh, and the baby is just like. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so uh, give me another skill from anybody in this wonderful group we have here that you're proficient in that you might use to get through this chaos. You might say, um, I'm going to use... Got... Go ahead. I've got survival. I've never used it before, sure. so I don't know what you're can proficient? be used for. Yeah, proficient. Sure. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll that. <laughs> A one plus five. Did you roll that? <laughs> Six. Oh. I didn't roll it with advantage. Yeah, because of Iris. Uh... All right, 19. <laughs> yep, you're successful. <laughs> you use your survival skills. Um, your time in uh, a certain company uh, served you well, and um, you know how when to hide, uh, when to sprint out, when to punch one of these walking brains in the face. Um and you make it to Iris's uh, small little home underneath a larger home, and she lets you in, and she's got a pretty huge bar that she puts on this door, barring it. Um, considering her size, she's just like a middle-aged woman, as far as you can tell. Um, you would think that this wood is probably, this wood uh, bar she's put in place is probably a good over 100 pounds. Um, but she handles it fine. Um, and uh, you guys are breathing hard, and you're so far, you think, safe inside her, her home. Um, now, would you say that her home is well decorated? Does it look... Sparse. Um, it's, it's very uh, utilitarian. Mm. Um, but she welcomes you, and she says, okay. she kind of, especially you, Nihilus, she, when she talks, uh, she welcomes all of you and looks at all of you, but when she gets to you, she kind of looks at you and then realizes what she's seeing, because she's seeing herself in, like, the most mm -hmm. ugly... Mm -hmm. By the way, Girasol, uh when you look at Nihilus, um, his, no. his head is like a funhouse <laughs> mirror, so it distorts your whole being into the ugliest version of of yourself like you it's hard to look at him uh and that's why you see people especially iris kind of saying welcome to my house and kind of bowing trying not to look at him i call it avant-garde <laughs> it's normal thing we that call it horrible it's not n no it's not normal you see i was cursed because i'm amazing and i just don't understand why this happened We'll just say it's courtesy of uh, your latest employers. Close mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's awful. What the heck? I thought something <laughs> happened to me. You're just, yours is worse. <laughs> so, Girasol, um, you know that when people enter the Virenal Dominion, they're usually, you go through the Tukor room, which essentially has a mirror uh, a bunch of mirrors everywhere and a riddle on it that basically says tell your deepest worst secret and be truthful about it uh, and everything will be fine otherwise if you don't there will be consequences it was a very it was it was much more eloquent and and rhythmic than I just 
uh, described, uh, but Prodi and Nihilus weren't quite as uh, forthcoming as Ashwin, Orson, and uh, Crispy were. So uh, you know that this room, everyone has to enter it. Usually the Strani company, the Beholders, send out Zadalkin, which are, or Zadalka, which are spectators, the smaller type Beholder kin, um, to essentially maim or kill anyone who doesn't abide by the Tuka room, but instead your former employers sent a angel who runs a carnival an angel to make them the way they look as punishment. Oh dear, so you all went through that magical room and somebody, some of you lied and yeah, no, some of us were twisting. too honest with the yeah. with the mirror. I didn't lie. I just spoke the truth about other people instead of myself. Yeah, it's supposed to be about themselves. I didn't lie. So what happened to you? And what is your hat on? What? Oh. <laughs> uh, well, in this bag, there's a face. And it decided that it <laughs> wanted a face other than its own. <laughs> You want yeah, to see? No, 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 I'm good. I'm good, thank you. Oh, okay, okay. You know the mirror. You told the lie, obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, I got very personal and emotional with the mirror, but it did not enjoy that. So he, became... he didn't. He didn't say anything. He was. He was remarkably silent. Uh, I I let the mirror see who I am. I cried. I wanted my true self, so I gave it my true self. So your true self is quiet then. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to revisit that one. <laughs> Sorry, we can't all love tractors or 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 lick the mirror or whatever the hell everyone else did. Wait, what, what is what? wrong with tractors and licking a mirror? <laughs> Who's germs? Wait, wait, what is a tractor? Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm also wondering that myself. <laughs> or 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 you know, we can't all be personal with our drills. Hmm. Nah, I, I, see, I guess I we can't. Fast coming from, from you, Mr. I have a mirror for a face trying to like, you know, you're not going to be sassy anymore because if you ever looked at yourself in the mirror, oh wait, you see multiple dimensions from your face. Yes, and I'm okay with it. It bugs everybody else, but I'm fine with it. It's self-reflection. At this point, I don't care. And that is why he will Gotta give him credit for mom. owning it. <laughs> so what, and I grab onto him and use Lesser Restoration. Uh, yeah, so uh, that, um, Nihilus, you feel better. You were feeling worse and worse after those spores entered. You inhaled those spores. As time went on, uh, you're feel, starting to feel worse, sick. Uh, when she does that, um, you uh, feel better, but your face does not change. Oh, that's fine. Thank you so much, Gerald. Excuse me? What did you just <laughs> <laughs> uh, Je I'm not good with names. <laughs> Let's try this. Jerusol. I'll take it. It's a lot better than what you just called me. <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't suppose you got another one of those in you for me. It's possible. I mean, you did just help me escape, no? I, I do what I can. I grab his hands and let go. One more lesser restaurant. Much obliged. My name's Crispin, by the way. It's a pleasure Hello. to meet you. Pleasure. Crispy. It's Crispy. Um, Crispin. Crispy. I'm, go I'm going to go Feel ahead free to and call me either. I'm gonna go ahead and give Jerusalem a uh, my green hammer bobble. Okay, and what? Thank you. What that you bought that from Obadiah Semple or somewhere else? No, I've had that for a very long time. I don't even remember where I got it from. Did you, Did you know what it does, or did you have it identified? No. <laughs> sure, that won't be important. And do you remember where you got it? I think on the docks. Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, thank this you. is 
That's me. Oh. Inter- oh, oh, oh. By the way, Girasol, um, in this world, uh, something happened about 200 years ago called the erasure, where books, written things, knowledge was erased. Knowledge from people's minds, knowledge from uh, runes on walls, carved into walls. Any Anywhere knowledge was kept, part of it was erased. And what also happened was uh, boring everyday objects were imbued with one use, uh, one-time use magical properties. So they're called baubles and gugads, gugas. Um, and uh, so like a hammer can cast a certain spell if you have it identified just once before it turns back into a normal uh, item. Uh, and so that's traded often between people. By the way, you guys know that you're breaking the law by just handing over a uh, a uh, Guga because you know that the Aspel Archon, are, that's their job. Um, you're not worried that they're there, but um, just giving you a, a heads up, Nihilus. Um, mm-hmm. He doesn't know, but he's okay with it anyway. Interesting. This is a. I, do you all? Did you all have stuff like this when you walked in, or the the room? Because I and I pull out the broken piece of rod. Proddy. I'm like, I don't know what this is. It just happened to. What? Oh my hut. god! And he Proddy takes out his brass four inch piece and he's just like comparing it. He's just like so. Uh, next to it. You you two are very excited. You thought something was pulling that item towards the other um which is what led you up here Prada, you kind of knew on your map mimic this is the area it said but so you guys are excited iris is also showing a lot more emotion as you guys do that and she goes oh my and you guys are uh <laughs> the three of you are kind of um very excited about these broken broken uh pieces of metal I feel I feel a moment coming on. I feel a moment. I'm not part of it. I'm just watching. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Prodi? Um, hey, uh, Iris. Like, do you know? Do you are these pieces of the 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 rod of seven parts? And her face, kind of, from being surprised and maybe even a little bit happy, it kind of goes back to a, a sad. Uh, disappointed uh, just look and she says to you I I am a I am a creature created by Felix Tricknips to be an assassin I was one of the first uh, warforged assassins he made and um, I wasn't good enough uh, and him and Avner Bree, his partner, and Prady and uh, Nihilus, you've heard this many times before, uh, they were partners a la Steve Jobs and um, Wozniak type of thing. Um, so Avner, Felix, they were going to, I heard them talking about a number of things, but one night I heard them talking about disassembling me and uh, ending my life and I escaped Uh, but unfortunately they made me out of a similar and she motions to the two rods you guys are holding up and they made me out of a similar piece of rod and I think that's where I get my life from it's my life force whoa this is a lot to process (laughs) So you're saying that you're made out of one of the pieces of the rod of seven parts or just the same material. It's in my core. It's one of the, I think it's one of hearing them talk. They powered me because I was supposed to be a special warforged and I am special, I think, but, uh, Uh at my core, that is what powers me and, and, uh, it, it it's just like that. I think it's one of the pieces of the rod of seven parts. Yes. Can that core be replaced with something else to keep you alive? I've been looking for that uh, in between 
trying to uh, trying to thwart anything Avner Bree or Felix Tricknips does. I've been trying to find a way to live without it, but I I haven't been able to. Oh boy! I'm so sorry. Oh boy! <sighs> With, well, Alice walks with up Alice, without, without, without <laughs> hesitation, <laughs> Prati, Prati just starts attacking her. <laughs> wants to, I, wants, I can tr see. tries to rip, yeah, out, <laughs> to rip out. Her wow, cord. wow. DMs love I'm this. Sorry, I'm sorry, I have to do this. I so, have to do this. Before we roll initiative, um, <laughs> Girasol, Crispy, Ashwin, oh. Orson, Nihilus, you see him start aggressively uh, attacking, essentially, begin to attack. It's making his way there. Make an attack roll, because you have surprise, uh, Nihilus. <laughs> Prodi? Or, uh, yeah, Prodi, I'm sorry. Thank you. I don't want to hurt Iris. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably. Just, just a just a physical attack. Whatever you're doing, like you're, are you using your your bird hands? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So make a. Yeah, roll a d twenty and add your strength modifier. Ooh. It is 17. Okay, yeah. Um, let me, uh, one sec. Oh, dear. <laughs> By the way, I love shit like that. I love being surprised. That's why I DM to be surprised. Uh, okay. Surprise! <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> that, that's her armor class. Um... Roll a, what is it, Brian, a d4 and then add strength? For what, unarmed strike? Yeah. Um, it's just one plus your strength modifier. Oh, one unless, plus... you unless, unless you have something like a racial trait that makes it more. Uh, Prodi, do you have no. a racial trait? Okay. So it's no, one... I think for... well, yeah, I don't have any strength bonus, so it's just one. Okay. <clears throat> she takes one Solid. point of damage and she is like, what are you doing? Uh, and this is where we check in with, uh, the rest of you to see if you're going to intervene or what are you going to do? Yeah, Girasol. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 Girasol would definitely react as soon as she saw him kind of rear up, um, basically shooting a fireball at him. A fire bolt or ball? Ball. I have, a uh, pretty flame. So yeah. Okay. Um, wow. Um, Nihilus is definitely going to, like, grab onto to Prati and kind of pull him back. Okay, one sec. Oh. Everyone, um, since I got what you're going to do, everyone roll initiative. <laughs> oh, no. I'm trying to do, help. Do I, I need to roll? Do, do I need to, to roll initiative? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 19! Woo! Uh, hey. Hold on. So, uh, Girasol's a 19, and then uh, it, did anyone give a, get above 20? <clears throat> I got 20. Okay, Orson, 20. Girasol, 19. 13. Uh, anyone 15 to 20 other than Girasol? I got a 16. 16. Ash. Okay. Uh, Crispy got a 13. 13. Nihilus, what'd you get? 10. Prati? 8. Okay, crispy. And I got a roll for Miss Iris. Oh, poor girl. <laughs> so um, I think this all happens at the same time where I'm reaching for Prati and Jerusal shoots the fireball. All yeah, I mean, time, um, right? okay. Yeah, so the Fine. way the in in narrative terms, Ouch. the way each round of combat works, uh, each round is six seconds, and so the only way essentially you guys are all 
acting at around the same time, but depending on where you are in the initiative order, it's a little bit faster. That's because mm -hmm. it just yeah. needs to be that mechan be that way mechanically. Um, um, can ahead. we take a quick break? Because I'd like to use the restroom. I mean, <laughs> uh, you're pretty low on the initiative. You can use the restroom while we keep going. Okay. All right. Because I think we're almost done. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Orson, what would you like to do? Um, I would like to turn Proddy into a sheep. <laughs> what's What's the uh, save on that? Um, let's see. Only more... Um, wisdom save, 15. Proddy? I'm definitely not going to get there. Uh, 11. <laughs> I'm a sheep. Matt. <laughs> Proddy, you feel a familiar feeling uh, that you've had before, except <laughs> instead of being a crow... You are a sheep, which I think is probably more stupid than a crow. Probably. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, yeah, so Iris gets attacked and then backs up. You get turned into a sheep. And uh, Girasol, you just saw Prati attack her and then um, just... Turn into a sheep. Turn into a sheep. So, uh, <laughs> what would you like to do? I mean, I was still hurling that fireball, so I guess that's gonna happen. I mean, you can. You that can. Will, you were just negate <laughs> Orson's sheeping. It's up to you. I'll. You can. Uh... I'll just turn back into Prati if that happens. Oh yeah. No, you still take the damage though. Yeah, so what do you do you actually want to cast it? You can pull it back because you see him before you finish casting this, you see him turn into a sheep. How impulsive are you? I'm I'm extremely impulsive, so Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is a fire bolt or it's your produced flame? So it's my produced flame. So oh, okay. essentially I'm attacking with a it's a quick flame, so it, it's not gonna hurt too much. But let me see if I actually end up okay. attacking it. Uh, Jake, a goat has four HP. Thank you for looking no that problem. up. No problem. No problem. I knew it would come. <laughs> I'm at a 19 to hit. Did I beat four? Yeah, I'm sure that's better than a sheep's AC. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Safe, a safe bet. <laughs> go ahead and roll damage. That's seven points of damage. So you see Prati go, whoop, sheep, and then... Fire whoop, back into Prati. So Prati take three points of damage. Uh, the Got four it. were used on the sheep, uh, and then the rest are the rest transfer onto you. Do you yell anything when you're doing it? Like what the anything? Yeah, it's a, I, I um, yell profanity in primordial. <laughs> if anyone hey! speaks, oh, I understand it. I did that. You taught me that. I did. <laughs> I did. Perfect. Um, what did what did you yell? Because I speak primordial. Uh, is it a very colorful language that has a lot of F's in it? Okay. <laughs> I, I just I just like. <gasps> yeah, you you hear Girasol saying F bird F stupid flying try to fly, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I have a quick question. Yeah, go so ahead. So for oh, I have a question um, also. What was the um radius of this flame am i gonna get hit because i was yes like, right there oh there is a uh oh there's totally yeah let me see range oh no wait hold on uh -oh. 30 feet oh so like oh, everyone like in the house <laughs> <laughs> yeah. down, but it's coming from me so whoever is directly in front of me is gonna get it crispy where are we at oh it's a straight line <laughs> we're not directly in front of you right <laughs> we'd be next to her Oh, it's good. So, I don't yeah, think so. there's a splash damage. I think it's just like, and I, I doubt you're very. When Prati pulled out the rod, I'm sure you would have stepped closer to him, correct? Yes. Um, I would say nobody's gonna take extra damage. Okay. Just because she's right there, and there's, I'm, if I'm reading this correctly, there's no splash damage. Nope. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um. Got it. 
And so I have a uh, radiant soul, so I'm resistant to radiant damage. So do it's, I take? It's it's not radiant damage. It's fire damage. Well, it's same thing for fire. Radiant oh, you... soul. Radiant soul makes you resistant to fire and radiant. Oh, congratulations! Right. You what take you? you take one point of damage. <laughs> you said resistant, right? Yeah, resistant. So yeah. Uh, oh, your your sheep was not, unfortunately. Yeah, the sheep is the sheep is, is a the sheep is a sheep. Kebab. <laughs> yeah, Prodi, it must have been weird going from your intelligence to a sheep and then quickly back you feel burned and you're just like Prodi, sheep, boom, back again. Uh, okay. But you smell delicious right now. Worse than salivating. Just That's not wrong. All down his uh, the front of his clothes. So Ashwin is your turn. You don't have to attack. It's up to you. Sorry. Don't hurt my friends. Uh, I jump off of Chris's um, shoulder and uh, I tail with Jurisol. Whoa. Whoa. What is happening? I'm just just doing an unarmed strike. Maybe not. With uh, wow. with fourteen, can I have a reaction to this? I mean, uh, does a fourteen hit? Uh, kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm a class fourteen, so. Okay, so what's your unarmed strike? Uh, you're a fighter, so it should be. It's three bludgeoning, three damage. Okay, so you take three damage unless you're resistant to bludgeoning, which I no. don't. I don't think a bard can be uh but um unless you're a barbarian uh that would be cool uh so you take that damage whipped in the in the face in the face okay the tail whipped i was on his shoulder (laughs) by a mouse nonetheless by a mouse no i was on his shoulder an adorable mouse by the way uh so with pink fur. Are you are are you serious? She has pink fur, right? Apparently now she does. Let's commit to it. Currently <laughs> right now, yes. Okay. Um maybe I'll cook up a uh special I, have, ability that allows you to change your fur color. I have painter supplies. We could say I painted you pink at some point during downtime. It was <laughs> You guys sure. painted me um, <laughs> Crispy, it is your turn. Ashwin just jumped off your so- shoulders. As you've seen her do very acrobatically, you know, mm-hmm. she climbed that crystal troll. And uh, so what would you like to do? Um, um, I'm going to sprint and dive at Prati and try to um, uh, tackle him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Dave's face. I love it. He's just... <laughs> I'm going to try to de-escalate the situation by oh my God. leaping at and tackling Prati. Sure. Um, so make a attack and, uh, I guess, grapple then after that. <clears throat> right. So my attack is garbage. Um, is so what, what would that be? A, can we call it a dex? Yeah, that's what definitely. All my things Since are. you're a monk. Yeah, um, yeah 13. Yeah, Ooh, right. armor class is a 14. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So I'm yeah. like, uh, no tackling here. Do you do you make a noise or do you say that telepathically? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was hoping you would say "ka." <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. I was baiting you to say "ka." Okay. Um, <laughs> If, if that's one attack, can my second attack be taking my whip out and trying to just like... Oh, God. Off yeah, sure. That's fun. We're all friends here. That is a nat 20. Oh, <laughs> 27. Nihilus fans himself. You see you see Nihilus fanning the mirror. <laughs> is the mirror fogging up? A little bit, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> All of you can no longer see. It's like your reflection is just muddied and foggy now. Uh, okay, so we do that more often. <laughs> Crispy, what did you uh, roll on that there? Um, All right, so so the twenty was the attack. Yeah. Um, so now you want a grapple? That's athletics. Oh, yeah, that's I think garbage. you would. 
<laughs> I think you would damage him, though, from that, don't you? Or yeah, you... I mean, it's using my whip. So Unless it's... you were... I'll That's say fine. since it's a nat 20, if you don't want to hurt him, you could, since it's a nat 20, but it's up to you. I would say that. I did it so artfully that yeah. I just take him mm. up. Okay. Um, and your athletic strength is... Garbage. Um, so that is... 12. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll see what happens when... So it's around both his legs, right? Perfect. I dove past him. Yeah. Missed completely. <laughs> um, and then on the ground whipped back and got his ankle. That's some Indiana Whoa. Jones shit. Uh, that pretty, it is. Pretty badass. Uh, we need to get you a gun, though, so the next time you... If you ever meet someone who's got a whip, you just uh, shoot him like he does in the movies. Um, yep, yep. i got to swap my longbow for a, for a gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you need to talk to Felix Tricknips about that, because he'd be the closest person to make that. Um, Nihilus. Okay, um, I want to, okay, I want to see if I can do this. I don't want to necessarily cast Wall of Water, but I do, uh, I can control water, so I want to kind of, like, bring a bucket of water down on, like, everyone. Basically, just, like, drench them all to kind of get them to stop what they're doing. I want to, like, de-escalate the situation. Okay, um, 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 I think you're gonna need. You're gonna ruin Iris's nicely decorated. <laughs> there's plate. nothing in here, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah, there's like a bed and like a, a <laughs> tiny table and a chair. Um, know. it's called minimalism. Um, <laughs> you ever heard None of it? Of this is sparking joy. I need to get rid of it all. Oh God, here we go. <laughs> um, so what you were using control water, correct? Yeah. I mean, there's no water in the room. Uh, well, that's why I was going to um, say, like, do a wall of water situation. You have that? Mm-hmm. Is that a racial trait? Uh, yeah. Holy moly. All right. Yep. Uh, and it, you can make the wall up to 30 feet long, 10 feet high, one <laughs> foot thick. Or you can make a ringed wall, 20 feet in diameter. I'll say you can, like... Because I don't want to hurt anyone with it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it would hurt just anyone. Wanna, but... No, it just hurt the resale kind of value like of the apartment. Of uh, so you want to put it around everyone and then just release the spell and, so it And let it soaks. collapse on yeah. them. Yeah. So you'll conjure it and then dispel it immediately so mm -hmm. it just washes on everyone. So yeah. uh, Girasol may not like that because she's got <laughs> fire going on. But uh, oh, so Girasol you know, attacked my friend. So um, what I'm doing is I'm summoning a ring of a ring wall of water, uh, and then I'm dispelling it so that it collapses on everyone. And um, I shout, "Stop it!" Your hair gets soaked. I don't know what happens mechanically with uh, lava hair, um, other than yeah, a lot of steam. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, it'll still be there, though. <laughs> so, all of you get soaked as Nihilus does that. Um, <laughs> Crispy, you get... It's almost like you're swimming for a few seconds. Because you're on the <laughs> ground, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, perfect. Uh, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I love it. I love it. Uh, Prodi, it's your turn. This is... You've just oh, wait, been... So so, <laughs> so but, but does Iris not get a turn? <laughs> she's she rolled incredibly bad. She's after you, man. She's after me. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. I just I just keep trying to. I mean, I can oh I reach God. her because I've got like I've got like a whip around my legs. So yeah, you're still within five feet of her, so you can try to reach her. Uh oh, Dave froze. Um. But he froze in such a great position. He does that. He's got a knack for that. It's amazing. Uh, let's bless up some sick rhymes. <laughs> or lecture us. Sure. Yeah. Um, we'll wait. Uh, uh, you know what? I'll just start looking at Iris's abilities. All right. <laughs> oh my god. Great fight, guys. Y'all are ridiculous. <laughs> I can't believe we're fighting each other right now. I can't believe it either. I love it. This is awesome. I've never done like, it before. 
<laughs> I like how we have a bunch of different objectives. Several people are de-escalating. Several people are yeah. just fighting. This is, <laughs> this is like, I ate this shit up. I love it. Just fighting. To be fair, you, you attacked our, my friend, so. <laughs> he attacked the Warforge. And by the way. You know, I was... Go ahead, Orson. I was, I was 50-50 on deciding if I wanted to attack um, Prodi or attack um, Iris. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I completely understood his point of view. It's like, you actually have something invaluable yeah. inside you. Uh, so if I you had turned her... Her... And by the way, a, a little bit more about Iris. She looks like a human. This is... You've seen... All of you have seen Warforged before. And they were used in the war between the North and uh, North and Veer and South and Veer, uh, created by Felix and Avner Bree. Um, and they look like robots, essentially. Most of the Warforged you've seen, but assassins, being what they are, they're supposed to fit in and look normal. Um, now that she's told you she's an assassin and a Warforged made explicitly by Avner Bree and Felix. Uh, you can see a seam kind of on the hairline uh, of her face. And so um, it's reasonable to think that she can replace her face with different masks. Um, and I wonder if Prodi's coming back. Otherwise, he's we're going to have to cut it a little bit short. Um, but I will have Iris disengage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Ooh, what? That's a fantastic Board. ability. Oh <laughs> uh, uh, no, it's it's uh, inf infiltration unit. Um, Silence can use her action to polymorph, which is weird because she's a construct. Um, yeah. hmm. It's a little weird. I may not like that. No, she's just going to disengage and go to the furthest part of the room, soaked. Uh, and that will Is be... That affect her? What? Does, does, does what affect her? Uh, nothing, just in my own head. Um, so, uh, we'll say Prodi reach for her, and I'll roll for Prodi. Where'd he go? Dis oh, He's restarting. Um... Discord, Discord crashed. Well, this is what happens. The DM rolls shitty when you disconnect, and I d no, it's not going to hit. Um, okay, so we're at the top of the round. Orson, it's your turn again. Uh, Iris went to the far side of the room. People are, uh, I believe, everyone except everyone's trying to de-escalate, right? Who's not trying to de-escalate except Ashwin? Oh, there he is. Dave. Who's trying to stop? Please. Sorry. Dave! I don't know what the back. hell happened. Yeah. Oh my god. Thank god you're back. <laughs> Your turn's over. So much has happened, we just killed Prodi. Prodi's? Oh, oh man. Roll up, roll up a new character, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> in fact, Orson's already uh, battered you up and starting to fry you over a flame that Girasol created. No, um, that's horrible. We don't. Well, we already, yeah, we already established some flame resistant. Uh, not when you're dead. Uh, <laughs> uh, so basically, I just rolled what you were already telling me you were going to try to grab her, and you, I rolled yeah. a four. So Great. that's I want not this meat cook. <laughs> Just, did, uh, did Iris have a go at me? Yeah, uh, she disengaged, went to the farthest part of the room, get got about. Oh, so 15, she didn't. She didn't attack. No, got about fifteen okay. feet away. Um, and we're at Orson's turn now. Orson, what would you like to do? Um, I hold my action because I, I'm, I'm pissed, but I don't want to do anything. Like so, do you want to hold it? Like, do you, what are you holding? You can pass. You don't have to use your turn or movement or action. Oh, okay. Yeah, like right now he's not doing anything because he's not sure what to do right now. So okay. I guess he'll pass. Yeah. I mean, if you're unsure, he probably wouldn't say anything either. He's probably just scoping the scene out, right? 
Yeah, okay. I'm just scoping what's going on. Jira Saul, it's your turn. What in the world was that tail whip? Hey, don't hurt my friend. <laughs> I wasn't trying to hurt your friend. He I was fireball at him. I was trying to hide your other person friend. Who so was you a... could have pinned him. You didn't have to throw I'll a fireball. Pick her up by the tail. All right. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> make, hey, hey, that hurts. make a uh, attack roll roll a d20 and then add your strength modifier if you well let's just hear your you want my strength roll roll a d20 and let me know what you got 10 okay and you're not proficient in unarmed either but I wonder if Jack of All Trades would probably help you out with that. But at least give me half. Yeah. Uh, so 12. Wow, you are your stats are insane. I know! <laughs> <laughs> uh, holy shit. Um, so I'll say plus three because your strength is 16. Uh, that's 15. Ashwin, what's your AC? 15. She grabs you by the tail, and um, one of the disadvantages of being a mouse folk or a halfling or a gnome is this is a possibility. She's got you by the tail and holding you in the air. Uh, yeah, it's it's just as we're all imagining it. Um, probably a little degrading for her. <laughs> poor Ashwin. It doesn't grow back. Do you think that it hurt when you tail whipped to me? No, you're tough. I, I, no, no more tail whip, okay? Don't, no fireballs. So, Fine. Put her down. So um, I'm going to say we're out of, everything's calming down, unless Prati, I'll just, <laughs> if you want to keep attacking, um, if you don't want to keep attacking and you just want to, Listen to Nihilus and everyone else. Crispy's got you tied around the ankles. Uh, we can be out of initiative if you want to listen. Or what do you want to do, Prodi? Um, just thinking real quick. Uh... I go before him, so yeah, uh, I'm ready. I, to I did not expect. <laughs> I so yeah, we can be out of we can be out of initiative, and Prodi just goes. Guys, guys, I just, I need that, I need the piece of the Rod of Seven Parts. She was a, she's a, she's basically an artificial, like, life form. She's not, like, a real person. She, tr Felix, Felix Trickna built her. Like, the, the outcome of me getting the, the Rod of Seven Parts, like, far outweighs the, the, the negative of just it, uh, disassembling an artificial intelligence like this, like, I didn't expect this reaction, so... <laughs> what, well, I mean, what makes you she, think she's not a real person? She, she seems to think and have her own opinion and her own mind, if you, if you ask me. So far, we've seen evidence of that. She even helped you get out of a sticky situation, no? Yes, we're in her house. Yeah, yeah, but what I, kind of hospitality is that? <laughs> Rules of hospitality. You're asking. You were wondering <laughs> earlier about what does it mean to be good and how do you be. Good. <laughs> Rules of hospitality are a good place to start. You need to be a better person or a better bird thing that you are. Remember what I told you? Be a good bird. Ah, oh, see. Somebody else told you. Oh man. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Does Prati just get quiet and it's just kind of like... Feel... I still really want that, uh, sure. that core. So does he just get quiet and kind of at the moment um, he's going to... I'm going to I'm gonna approach I... Prati and say, hey, let me, let me see what I can do. <laughs> All right. So he, the... there's a little wink between... Uh... So, so Nihilus, you use the Ophidian of messaging? No, I just I'm right next to him, so okay. I, I don't have I don't have an Ophidian. So. No, but you have your yeah. your tele telepathy. Yeah, ability. but I just like whispered it to him because we're right next to each other. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. And so I walk up oh. to uh, to Iris and I say, uh, "Hey, Iris, um, 
that rod that's got you uh, living right now, um, <laughs> you you say you don't know if there's anything else out there that can uh, keep you alive? Yeah, that's... And she's in the corner of the room, so, um, you know, just kind of holding her staff close to her. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, uh, okay, so I'm going to ask, okay, if, if hypothetically, uh, we took the rod... And we found something else that could keep you alive. Would you? Would we be able to uh, put it back into you, and then you're back to normal? You mean put whatever you found? Mm-hmm. I mean, I would hope that's the case. That's what I'm looking for. Something. Yeah. Would you? Because we're a bunch of traveling adventurers. Would you be willing to to uh, have faith? in us enough that you would let us take the rod and then bring uh something back for you to live because we're trying to find trick nips right now anyway because he he hired us um and so we're gonna be seeing him and i'm sure he has something that's gonna be able to keep you alive i he wants to disassemble me he wants to kill me if you tell him you know where i am at he will request that you bring me to him and he will destroy me oh okay we won't tell him it's you make is that a uh are you serious or are you serious okay make a persuasion roll okay i got a 19 jesus christ yes um Where would I be uh, if you took We the... have several bags of holding, and we can take you with us. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um... Can any of us overhear this or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's out loud. I'm saying it loud enough for everyone to hear it. Like, I know it should work. I was in one. Well, ha- half of you was in one. It was kind of hilarious. Well, why don't we ask her if she knows what this thing looks like and how it's built so we can make a copy of it? So, we can't. So she says, if you, so you want to take this out of me, put me in a bag of holding, which is fine because I don't breathe, uh, and then take me out of the Viranol Dominion. Do you realize what's going on with the Living Gate and the Dread Gate and what's going to happen if one of those or both of those things is not if one of those things happens bad things will happen if both of them happens absolutely not i don't know i have i have no idea okay so the dread gate will uh open uh, essentially expand the planes of dread to the viranal dominion and i don't know if that means it will continue to spread across all of Envir or what but the shadow fell I- and the dark the shadow fell. Are you fe- keeping it closed? I'm not keeping it. They're trying. The Strani act and uh, Girasol, you know this because you've been around these beholders. They're trying to open the Dread Gate, which um, is doing exactly what she said. Uh, but they're having. They're struggling to do it without the help of Felix Tricknips. Um, but that's their goal, and that's why there's fog rolling in at weird times. That is poisonous essentially it causes exhaustion um and other such weird creatures the the barrier between planes is growing thin because they're making progress on this dread uh, gate um and iris says uh and the living gate they're trying to to open something terrible you saw those brains and um i interrogated someone that said they're trying to wake father limic I don't know what that is, uh, but it can't be good. Uh, if, if you guys leave or don't try to stop this, the world... We at- have a lot on our plate, but we can add this to it. Maybe we can help you out, and then in turn, you help us out by giving us your life-giving rod. I just... Crazy? Um... <laughs> Remember that time I rolled a 19? 
Yeah, but that's it's her life. <laughs> it's her life. Um, and you're a stranger. Um, Could be a high DC. <laughs> uh, you mean, yeah, like high as an impossible? Um, Could be. She's These going to say, can... I will I will go with you and try to find the replacement, as I've been doing. But I just met you, and I'm not going to die until and, and mm. just hope that you're going to come back and mm -hmm. resurrect me. Okay, you can travel along with us. That's fine. You sound so creepy. It just <laughs> you can travel. State. I don't understand. <laughs> uh, you can travel with us. Um, she goes uh, because guess what? You've been here for how long? And and I don't think searching one area is going to help. So if you come with us, then that's great for you. Okay, I hope I've heard stories that. The fog is bordering the whole Dominion now at times, and if that's the case, then we won't be able to exit, so we may have to find a time when it's down or, or not. But I also have a ring that I cannot use because I am not of flesh and, and uh, bone. Uh, she hands you a... Uh, she's giving it to everyone, essentially. Uh, yeah, Jirsol? Oh, never mind. I'll let you go for it and see what happens. Uh, she hands you guys and says, this is for everyone. I don't know what it does, but I found it in a cave where I was searching, uh, in the Southern mountains, uh, on a dead body. And it's just a silver banded ring. Uh, pretty simple. I, she says, I think it's magic. Um, I tried to cast identify on it and, um, nothing specific came out. It, uh, I think it's because, um, I don't know, it, maybe it was a, trying to attune to a construct, I don't know, but uh, Is here's... Is it a single ring? Who, who, what? Is it a single ring, one ring? Yeah. So oh, I'm totally again. grabbing that. Okay. Um, um. And, uh, yeah, so you have uh, the uh, ring... And um, do you, I don't believe you have any attunement slots because uh, yeah. you only have three. So I'm just going to hold on to it. Okay. Are you guys cool with her taking it or? Uh, I mean, no, but I'm not going to fight her for it. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I need the way of getting out of here. You don't understand. I have. Five other sisters that I have to return to because I almost, died. I think I might have died. No, I, I don't know what is going on, but I know that I need to get back to my sisters pronto. So mm, I have a sister too. I'm not trying to get back to her. Uh, Jirasol, uh, when Iris was explaining the, the borders of planes being thin and some weird planar shit going on, um, that might have cleared some uh, possibilities up on how uh, you might get out of here. Um, if you want to unattune to one of your magic items and attune to this ring, uh, you can. I don't know if any of you have Identify. I don't. Nope. That's going to be a no. I used to. Uh, I'm going to unattune to the lame tongue uh, sword. Okay. I'm gonna... And it's so just... uh, you attune to that ring, and uh, yeah, it's just a spell ring, and it does have a um, a spell in it, and it is. Let me just check real quick. It has, um, okay, Google, D&D uh, &D Beyond. Um, it has a spell that will allow you to essentially plane shift or teleport um, to what you believe is your home. So as I'm uh, trying to unattune, I like start digging out some stuff and I talk to the flame tongue sword 
Out. Dibs! Put the ring on. <laughs> it's yours. It's yours, uh, Ashwin. Flame Tongue Sword. That's a rare sword, I believe. Um, nice. Pretty badass. Um, so congrats on that. And anything, Jirasol, you'd like to say? I really enjoyed my time with you all. I don't even real. I feel like this is all made up in my head. Oftentimes that happens having this thing <laughs> in my head. But good luck to all of you. I do hope uh, one, one last one last thing, Jirasol. Could I oh. could I have that that piece of the rod? I'll trade trade for it or pay you for it. So there, there's a thing that you and I need to discuss. Uh, I, I happily will give this to you, but you cannot take anybody's life like a war force without their permission. All right, I, I agree to that. Uh, if that's uh, if Jirasol, you want to roll insight, you can, uh, or if you just want to believe him off. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, uh, Prati, is this deception? Roll, just roll your d20 and and tell, make the modifier with whether it's persuasion or deception. You don't have to tell us. Does that make Me? sense? Yeah, Prati. Like, okay. whether you were lying about that or or not, add the relevant score. Yeah. So if it's if you're not lying, you would add persuasion. If you're lying, add deception modifier. You're not gonna totally nineteen. Twenty two. No. So what were you telling the truth or not? No. <laughs> you tell me. Take it back. <laughs> That's rough. This adds That's some rough. this adds some interesting exactly. planar storylines. I have heat metal. <laughs> I'm start heating it up just a little bit. Do you want to try that again? You're heating his rod up? <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> Come on. Ashwin. <laughs> Lex, you're better than that. I was expecting I, can, give, I mean, I mean I probably give, uh, no. inspiration to the DM. <laughs> the one that I had in my hand. Okay. Um and... Do I want to try it again? You're giving me another shot at it? No, as in tell the truth, you're not gonna do it. <laughs> well, we have to. I still have to roll, wouldn't I? You can't. She knows you were lying. So, like, what do you what do you do? She's not giving it to you now. Now you have to convince her. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna agree to. I mean, <laughs> I'll do everything I can to like get uh, get Iris's replacement. But if it comes down to it, like, I still need to take that. You are going to find a replacement for Iris to save her life while you take her life away? No, no. We're just we're we're going with Nihilus's plan. We're going to do everything we can to for her. If she comes with us, like I don't have to do anything. But I need to find seven parts of this rod, pretty much at all costs. So. So Ashwin, hi. <laughs> you save her life. Is that still hot? No. <laughs> mm, and I made a roll for that. That was a very obvious. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for sure. So, Ashwin. This is blowing on the rod. <laughs> I'll open up my bag. Like, just put it in there. Don't be mean. Okay. <laughs> and uh, if you guys would like to say anything else, uh, you can. Otherwise, forever hold your peace to Jirasol. Oh, okay. She's, she's zapping out of there. I believe so. I'll try not to. Bye. Watch out for those brains. Brains? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, we'll say you guys say your goodbyes and, uh, Jirasol, uh, correct, you activate the ring and whoop, and she <laughs> disappears in magical teleportation slash, uh, astral projection dust. Uh, and, uh, that's where we're going to end it for the night. 
Um, I'd like to thank Cynthia Marie for joining us. It was so much fun. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of weird things happened and that I didn't expect. <laughs> and I'm very, very happy with it. Let's go. Let's start with you, Jerusalem. If you have anything uh, you'd like to promote, uh, go ahead and promote. Oh, goodness. Uh, so please check out Sirens of the Realm. We should be coming back in the near future. We're on Tuesdays on twitch.tv slash dnd. I'm currently playing Nellie G on uh, Geek and Sundry's LA by Night. Uh, that is on Friday night at 8 p.m. twitch.tv slash Geek and Sundry or on Alpha. You can also catch me and Ryan on uh, Life Action Roleplay, which is our podcast, also featuring our other co-host, Kai Norman. We talk about LARPing, role-playing, life. Come join us. Or you can find me on Twitter. Uh, that's at Sindancer or Instagram, Cynthia underscore underscore Marie. I'm fairly active on those, so please come check me out. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> Lex. Hi, I'm Lex. You can find me on Instagram at uh, it's underscore or period underscore period Lex on Twitter at it be Lex. Um, you can also find me on Scabby Brewster on Twitch. Uh, we'll be starting a Starfinder game soon. Uh, Dave. Um, yeah, just follow me on Twitter and Instagram at drod3. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Ryan. Hello, I'm Ryan Omega. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram under Ryan Omega, under Twitter under Ryan OMGA. You can also find me on Kelly Eden's YouTube channel um, called Nation Brats, where he plays Toshi. You can find Sin and I and Kai on the podcast Life Action Roleplay, which is now on Spotify, as well as iTunes and Podbean. And coming up on Scabby Rooster, I will have a show uh, based off of some LARP experiments. Cool. So I'm going to be doing that, and that'll be coming up um, on Tuesdays. <clears throat> Um, in March. Cool. And cast will be in the Excellent. Uh, Richard. Hi. Uh, yeah, you can find me on all social media at Le Richard C. Um, I have uh, Awkward Human Survival Guide. Uh, <laughs> check that out. It's a podcast. Also, Interview with a Nerd, which um, when I get off my lazy ass, I will be posting the one where Ryan uh, was a guest on. So uh, I guess look for that in the very near future, hopefully. Or, you know, tweet at me and tell me to get my shit together, and I will do that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Brian. And you can't find me anywhere. I'm not a ghost <laughs> on the internet who just really likes to play D&D. And I am the Dungeon Master, Jake Friday. You can follow me on Twitter, at Jake Friday. Follow Venture Ventures on Twitter, as well as on Twitch, and podcasting stuff like the Googles, or the iTunes, or the Stitcher. And um, yes, thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll be back for the next episode Find out what happens. Uh, be excellent to others. Be excellent to yourself. Uh, have a great night. Uh, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.